I saw opportunity to film. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Hi, my name is Cynthia Yadira Gonzalez. Um, my pronouns are they, them. I am a sculptor, a weirdo, uh, a crafter, <laughs> an awkward human being. <laughs> I've spent most of my life here. I uh, technically was born in um, El Paso, Texas, and then I went to Juarez for a little bit, and then we came over here for like, I think I've been here for like 30 years, and I'm 37, so that's Ooh, all my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I grew up in the east side, and I was not allowed to go out very often unless it was something that was creative or uh, educational. So I found a whole bunch of youth groups that would cater to low-income families. So I went to Makla <laughs> at around age 14. And then I went to the San Jose Museum of Art and they had a grant and a huge fund for teen art programs. So I, I grew up doing that kind of stuff. And then I also got into the Aztec dancing community at like 11 because it was free and something to do. I, I have four siblings and three of them are younger than me. So I had to take care of them all the time. <laughs> so it was really hard to hang out with people my age. So a lot of my work has to do with uh, my upbringing and how I'm dealing with parenthood and my upbringing because of my Catholic um, like grandparents and parents, I had a lot of shame around sex. So when I make work, there's always like a hidden uh, sexual undertone because not only is uh, sex shameful, it's also necessarily like necessary to procreate. <laughs> so um, growing up with five siblings and being told that like sex is shameful, your body's shameful, but all these kids keep popping up and then all of <laughs> like all your friends are getting pregnant. Like there's this definite like separation, but unity because then you also have the internet <laughs> and sex is all over the place. I work everywhere and anywhere. I don't have one singular place that I work at. I usually roll around a cart and whenever I have um, like clay stuff, I'll take my cart with me and then set up wherever. Um, here is mostly where I do like little bits and pieces and then put stuff together, but I work anywhere. <laughs> I started as a painter. Uh, I wanted to be a painter and I painted all the time and I would stay up all night painting and um, yeah I thought that that was what I wanted to do and then in 2009 I went to San Jose City College and I took my first ceramic class with Michelle Greger and I fell in love with being like oh I can make anything in 3D and it doesn't have to be stuck on a wall. Just became enamored and excited and she was just so freaking positive she like would always be like oh you're doing great you could do anything and i would just stay there for hours after and beforehand uh working on things and doing so many like outside projects so i when i started making things out of ceramic i wanted uh to just make things about my mental state and I'm all over the place. I have uh, anxiety and depression and uh, they, they kind of like just overtake a lot of things. And one thing that I wanted to explore with, with my themes is like, where do these things come from and stem from? And a lot of the times, well, through therapy, I found out that it's a lot through how I was raised in my childhood. So I am uh, trying to reconceptualize my childhood through um, my adult eyes by making playthings. I um, make dolls out of things that you wouldn't necessarily think dolls are made out of. So I made a whole bunch of dolls out of metal. I've made dolls out of clay. I've um, made dolls out of pinata material. There's also just like this thing with all my work that I want to keep like emphasizing and it's play. Um, and a lot of people that make things like aren't they're all like, this is precious, this is one of a kind. And of course my stuff's like one of a kind, but at the same time, if I make things, it's to, to heal myself. And sometimes part of the healing is breaking it. I want to get people involved in touching my artwork. So I've been making toys that people could play with. 
So it's not just about me. <laughs> it's about like the ex coming in and being able to touch it and noticing that these things aren't precious and these things are meant to be played with. Um, that's the biggest thing I want to do. So I do make videos and I post them like on my social media and I, um, I dress up like a clown and I, I do these things. I like destroy uh, pinatas and I destroy other things. Just I've destroyed like clay things that are breaking by themselves. So uh, it's definitely a thing that I, I think about often. I also make things that are like uncomfortable to wear. So like having them on somebody or myself, like it's, it's um, a performance of endurance sometimes. The semester is finishing, so I feel like I don't want to do any of my classwork, so I've been starting to make um, sculptures again. So this is one that I'm working on right now. Uh, uh, since I deal a lot with depression and mood swings, uh, it's definitely a um, visual depiction of how depression could take a hold of you and you know, you have to put on this mask of like being happy and being someone when you're definitely just like struggling on the inside. I use fingers a lot. Like not only are is it identity, it's constant touching. I, I need to feel things. I need to know how it feels all the time, uh, which I think is part of the anxiety. <laughs> My art has uh, helped me embrace the ugly. I make a lot of aesthetic choices that are ugly on purpose. I know that I don't look good with short hair. Shave your head. I know that like the piercings are a little weird and off-putting for some people. Get some more piercings. Uh, same with tattoos. Like I'm covered in bugs. Like they're something that it's like very attractive of the ugly that I'm like always into. I have to like internally find where that's coming from and kind of fight the narrative Constantly. I've <laughs> been in school since 2017 and I don't know exactly how it would be once the facilities are no longer like there. Uh, it's a big fear that like once I don't have facilities, I'll stop, but everybody tells me I won't. Um, yeah, I'm just afraid that like once I'm out of here, I won't have access to kilns and I won't have access to, to the space and I won't have access to like metals that I will just be like, oh, well, this is defeating. But at the same time, knowing myself, I've made things out of everything. So I don't think I would necessarily stop making. I just stop making what I'm making now, which could be a good thing. <laughs>